Hey there, this is Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to set up your classes so that they can be sorted. We're also going to talk about how to use some of the classes that are built into Java to sort your arrays for you. We'll talk about what sorting is and why you should do it and what makes an algorithm an effective sorting algorithm. And then we'll get into how you can make an object sortable and how you can actually sort it. So what is sorting? I mean, that seems like an obvious question, but we should probably talk about a definition. Uh, from our perspective, sorting means taking the elements in a collection, and by collection we usually mean array, and placing them in some meaningful order. And what that means is that you have to figure out some way of putting uh, the objects of a certain class in order so that you can compare any two objects and say, OK, well, this one goes before this one, or this one goes after that one. Now when we talk about sorting algorithms, and we're going to talk about a lot of sorting algorithms in this unit, um, we talk about them as needing to be both effective and efficient. Uh, when we say effective, what we simply mean is that the algorithm works, and that you can trust that it's going to work every time. But that has nothing to do with how well it works. When we want to talk about efficiency, um, we normally care about efficiency in terms of time. So we want our algorithm to run as quickly as possible. Obviously, if an algorithm isn't effective, it's also not going to be efficient, because if it doesn't work some of the times, it doesn't matter how fast it runs. But when you're talking about two algorithms that are equally effective, then normally you compare their efficiency, how well they can uh, sort a given amount of data in a certain amount of time. As far as wh why you might want to actually sort your data or not, because um, it seems like, hey, you know, you should always sort your data. Well, no, not necessarily. But there are some good reasons to sort your data. One is that if your data is in order, it's a lot easier to find what you're looking for. And we'll talk about searching algorithms in this unit, including one called binary search that actually requires that the data be sorted in order for it to work properly. Uh, having your data in sorted order allows it to be printed much more easily. I mean, that's sort of what you expect. When you see a list, you want the list to come out in order. So normally you have to sort your data. But there might be some reasons why you don't want to sort your data. One is that it takes time, OK? You know, you're wasting time sorting your data. If you don't need it sorted, don't waste that time. It also means that uh, when you have a sorted array, some operations actually take longer. It's easier to find things, but it's harder to put new things into the array because every time you add something new, you have to sort the array uh, and make sure that everything is still in order. As far as what you need from your data in order for it to be sortable, well, if it's a primitive, that's easy because you can always sort primitives because every primitive can be compared using the comparison operators um, like less than, equal to, not equal to, greater than or equal to, all those ones that you'd expect. But as you've seen with strings and other objects so far, those operators don't work with objects. And so in that case, you're going to need to um, make the object implement something called comparable, which is an interface which contains one method, and the name of that method is compareTo. Now the way that compareTo works is that it takes one parameter, and that parameter is another object of the same type as this object and it compares the two of them and it returns some numeric value based on that comparison. So the rule is simply that if you're calling, uh, if you say a dot compare to b, if a comes first then compare to runs it returns a negative answer. If a comes second it returns a positive answer and if it returns zero it means that the two objects are equal. According, again, according to whatever sort of ordering scheme that you deem appropriate for that type of object. Comparable, like some other classes that we've worked with, actually allows you to write it in templated form, which means we're going to start using those angle brackets. And for the first time, you're actually going to write a class that involves using angle brackets. So let's see how that works. So. If I had, for example, the track class from our arrays unit, and I wanted to make it so that this was a sortable class, then I'd have to make it implement comparable. 
And so what I'd have to do in my code is I'd have to, up at the top, say public class track implements, which I know you've seen before. Um, but in this case, it's going to implement comparable. And not just any comparable. This is where the angle brackets come in. It implements comparable track. And that means simply that you can only compare tracks to other tracks. And then we have to go ahead and write our method. So we've got a method public and compared to. Because we declared it as comparable track, we can use a track as the parameter. And now we just have to decide how we're going to compare this um, to the parameter O. And what we're going to do, which you can do sometimes if you're lucky, is just kind of pass the buck. So we're going to say that we're just going to return um, the value of comparing um, this title. We're going to compare that to the other title. So essentially, we're going to let the compareTo method for the string class determine the value for the compareTo method for this track class by just comparing one title to the other title. And that ought to work fine. Okay, so that's how comparable works. You have to make your objects comparable if you want them to be sorted using most of the algorithms that we're going to look at. We haven't looked at any algorithms yet though, so if you want to sort your data, you're going to need a little help. And so to do that, we're going to first introduce a class and a method that you can use called the arrays.sort method. Arrays.sort is nice because it'll take care of all the sorting for you. If you pass it an array of comparable objects, it'll sort them. Um, one thing to know that's important with arrays.sort is that uh, it actually is going to mutate the parameter that you pass it. So if you pass in an array to the sort method, it's going to sort that array. The data itself is actually going to get changed. So let's see what happens when we do that. So taking the example from before, um, here is the same track class. I've spruced it up a little bit with a constructor and a toString method just so we can see how it works. But if you take a look at our main method where you really see what's going on here, I've created an array it's got a bunch of data in it. By the way, when you're making test data, don't waste time being clever, okay? Just pick the shortest, most obvious set of data that'll tell you what you need to know. So I've got this data. I want to sort it in order. I'm going to print it first, and then what I'm going to do is call the arrays.sort method on that array, and then I'm going to print it again afterwards. So if I compile and run this, and then we see what the output window looks like, Hooray, it works. So because I made my track comparable, we can compare it using the arrays.sort method and put everything in order. Okay, so in this lesson, you've learned about the general concept of sorting, why it's useful, why sometimes it's not useful. You've learned that you can always sort primitives, but if you want to sort an object, it has to implement the comparable interface, and you have to write a compare to method. And once you've done that, You've learned that you can use the arrays.sort method in order to sort the data um, in your array. All right, you're all set.